are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are LA Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, our show is going to help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you were, are, or might be considering a career career in the entertainment industry. Our guests will provide you with tips, advice, and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue your career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that you will definitely have someone on this show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. If you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, and listen to their interview instantly, you can download one of the shows as well. Go to the LA Radio, uh, LA Talk Radio website, which is latalkradio.com. Click on the link at the top that says Channel 1. Scroll down, look for the graphic of our show, Question Reality, and click the link. And this takes you directly directly to our archive page and that is where you can view the list of all of our past guests. We've been on since 2008 and we've had a variety of wonderful, wonderful guests. So uh, lots of career advice for you. Models, musicians, comedians, PR people, celebrities, uh, Tony winners, blah, blah, blah. The, it's just endless. So go and check out our archive page and listen and download one of those shows. We are also on iTunes under the podcast section, and we're also on Stitcher.com. So pass the word, spread it around, and uh, tune in to us while you're listening to one of your favorite tunes on iTunes. And you can only listen to music so long, and then you need some talking. You need some, some verbal stimulation. Okay, so we want you to also... Check out our future guests. We got exciting, exciting people coming up. A lot of different types of guests next year that I planned. People that are behind the scenes because we always, we mostly do people who are in front, in front of the camera, in front of the microphone singing. You know, I wanted to add um, a little bit of variety. So we're going to go behind the scenes and we're going to have wonderful uh, occupations that you didn't know uh, that you could do. A lot of people come out here to pursue a career as an actor, a singer, model, comedian. But sometimes they say, you know what, I'm not not really as into it as I thought I was. What else can I do? And they find that they really dig these other positions behind the scene. Assistant director, uh, producer, uh, PR person, post script, supervi- uh, script supervisor, post production, etc., etc. Wonderful careers that you may not know enough about if you don't live uh, in LA or in the entertainment industry yet. So uh, we've got exciting people coming up. Now, that website is questionrealityshow.com, questionrealityradioshow.com, too. Oh, I have two links. I forgot about that one. Questionrealityshow.com or questionrealityradioshow.com, and that's our official, official uh, website. Now, enough of me talking on and on because we want to get to this hot, sexy Vixen that's going to be on the show today, and her name is Mara Marini. Who doesn't love that name? I mean, that sounds like a pasta dish at the Olive Garden. I mean, that is fantastic. I love this name. I don't know if this is really her name because this is such a perfect name. I don't know if this is her stage name. We're going to have to find out about that. But right now, you might want to go and and check out her uh, website. Now, I'm going to have to ask Mara about this because I have it as Mara Marini dot net and I tried to pull it up and it went oops so uh, we're, we're going to find out about that but right now you can check her out on Twitter at popgloss p-o-p-g-l-o-s-s she's also on Facebook under Mara Marini M A 
A M A R I N I. And she's also on Instagram under Pop Gloss. And I love that. That sounds like a whole album from the 80s. I got to ask her where she came up with that because that's totally cool, too. This seems like a really cool hip chick we got on today. Let me just tell you a little bit about her. She is a Canadian film, television, and theater actress. She's perhaps best known for her recurring role as Brandy Max on the hit NBC comedy series, Parks and Recreation. I love this show. I am so obsessed with this show. I just watched the, the uh, I think it was a two-hour or a one-hour. I can't remember. It seemed like it was two hours, but the two-hour premiere where they were in London. It was just so wonderful. I love this. Love, 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 love this show. Um, now, Mara has also appeared in a number of indie comedy and horror films, and recently she launched a popular digital comedy video series called Inside Dating on Break.com. And I want to find out more about that because it's a whole digital comedy video series. I got to find out what's going on in that world. And uh, she will soon be guest starring on Disney's Kicking It. Woo! And uh, she's also shooting a politically incorrect feature comedy this fall. So with it fall being upon us, we got to find out this is exciting and happening now. So without further ado, we want to talk to you, Mara Marini. What is going on? Hi. <laughs> wow. My God. Now, wait, I'm telling you, first of all, is that your real name, Mara Marini? Yeah. Yes, it is. That's my birth name. <laughs> what? You, Mara Marini, is that one name? Or I thought it was Mara and then last name Marini. Is that one? It is. It is. It is. Oh, so, what? yes, no. Wow. Yes, we're born with that name. <laughs> wow. Your mother picked a winner there. I was actually... <laughs> I was actually on the list to receive the name Poppy, if you can believe that. But thank oh. God my mother's obsession with Elvis won out, and I got named <laughs> Priscilla, so I'm very happy with that. But Poppy, I don't know. Especially not now. I mean, it would have been cute as a child, but not at my age <laughs> being named Poppy. I would have definitely had to change it to Mara Marini, for sure. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you real quick, because I, I, don't, I think I might have the website address oh wrong. yeah i don't know it's it's, it's dot com actually it's mara marini dot com oh not dot net. well you know <laughs> I, tr I tried both let me just go in because we want to make sure we give the people what they want and i'm sure they want to see mara marini on the website okay dot com <laughs> there you go that makes the difference it's not dot Yay. net as oh <laughs> Bad Steve, bad Steve. Okay, fantastic. Oh, my God. Now, first of all, I am obsessed with Parks and Recreation. You were on there. I remember the episodes like it was yesterday. <laughs> and let me ask you, how exciting was that? I want to hear all about it. Tell us what your experience was like being Brandy on uh, Parks and Recreation. Oh, man, it's the best time of my life. I mean, Nothing compares. It's just so wonderful. Everyone is so friendly. and Everyone is so wonderful to work with. Like, the writers are amazing. Hair and makeup. Like, they're just, everyone is so talented and so fun. And everyone's just having the best time in their life. And it just shines through everything. Everyone's so wonderful. And then, obviously, getting to work with Amy and, and everyone is just like a dream come true. They're all so amazing. And, and such they're just so generous and wonderful to work with as actors. It's just so lovely. I, I can't rave enough about it. <laughs> really lucky to work with them all. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I just so, they seem like they're such a fun group off stage. Now, we know Amy so from fun. SNL. I can imagine yeah. this woman, I mean, she's probably on all the time. She's just, it's instinctual for her to be funny. So, how great so is hilarious. she when the camera's oh. Let's, let's talk about her because she is like one of my, my I, Jane Lynch and Amy Poehler, they're, they're just like my favorite comedians. So I want to know how great is she <laughs> off when the cameras start rolling. Please don't burst my bubble. Tell me she's just as wonderful. She's even more wonderful. She's just, I can't say enough wonderful things about her. She's so kind and so generous and just such a great person and She's just so much fun to work with, and, like, she really, you know, she's so present. Even if the cameras are not on her, she's so present with you for your stuff and, like, so helpful, and 
um, you know, it's so hard sometimes because, well, you know, there'll be the first few takes that you do with the script, and then, you know, there's some fun takes at the end that you can kind of ad lib, and the stuff she comes up with, like, it's so hard to keep it together because she's so funny. <laughs> Yeah. It's so much fun. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, I can't imagine, but I'd like to imagine working with a with <laughs> a, a comedic icon such as Amy. I mean, this this woman is just a one of the co comic geniuses, in my opinion, of our time. Oh, for uh, sure. As as most of them that were on Saturday Night Live and all of the other comedy shows that we've experienced. But I I wanted to um I wanted to know specifically. Did you have, how was your encounter with the hot, sexy Rob Lowe? Oh, wow. He is handsome. Can you <laughs> I not remember, stand it? It is, it's, it's kind of unreal. I remember my first day, the first episode I ever shot with them, um, I was in the makeup chair before I'd really met everyone yet. And Rob Lowe comes into the makeup trailer, and he puts his hand on my shoulder, and he's like, oh, my gosh, I almost kissed you on the head. I thought you were Amy Poehler from behind. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, I wish you did kiss me on the head. Like, he looks like a, a, a Ken doll. He's so perfect in person. I mean, he looks beautiful on camera, too, but in person, he's so, it's just so shocking. He's so perfect looking. Like, he's so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh my gosh, I mean, that guy is just one of the uh, people that should have been cloned. I think all men should <laughs> yeah. be walking around. Half of the world should be looking like Rob Lowe. Half of them. That would sure. be pretty awesome. And it, it was just um, amazing to see him when I first started watching Parks and Recreation because, of course, I've been obsessed with him forever, but I never saw him doing comedy to the extent mm -hmm. that he was doing it on the show I didn't even know he could do comedy on this level and I was just so impressed and so blown away with his comedic timing and just the whole character because I of course we've seen him in so many other things and he really plays a bad guy very well well to <laughs> see him do this it was just amazing so you must have had a great time and picked up a lot of stuff from working with these people yeah, so much fun. Just like best time ever. Nothing oh. compares. <laughs> well, let's just hope you have uh, more more great times with more of our comedic yeah, icons. I hope I get to come back this season. Fingers crossed. So. Oh, okay. I have, I have my fingers, my toes crossed, and my eyes, Laura Marie. Now, I Thank love you. you. Love your name so much. I have to do the whole Mara Marini. I can't just call you Mara. It just it seems <laughs> it seems sacrilegious to do it. It's a beautiful name, so I hope you don't mind. So now no. let me yeah, you are uh, stunningly beautiful and I can absolutely cool. see where they thought that you and I mean you and Amy kinda look like, you know, sisters of some sort <laughs> or cousins, right? But um you're just so, so drop dead gorgeous and it oh, seems man, very, very um, natural that you would have gone into the entertainment industry. But let's go back, Mara, from when you were a child. Uh, mm -hmm. You know how when we're little, we think, oh, you know, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. Uh, some people want to be a fireman, a doctor, etc. What mm -hmm. did little Mara Marini want to be <laughs> when she grew up? What was happening in Mara Marini world? I always wanted to be an actress from, like, the time I can remember, like, knowing what it was like I remember being like four years old and telling my parents it's what I wanted to do and then at around six years old I wanted to, I was in Winnipeg so at the time there wasn't a ton of resources but I was like I wanted to go into an acting class and you know my parents were like not super thrilled about it but I right. stole my mom's um well stole I took my mom's <laughs> Shakespeare you stole it we off stole the it from our mothers right <laughs> Yes, and uh, and I just started memorizing, and so my mother was finally like, all right, I'll, I'll enroll you in an acting class, and then I just, you know, fell more in love with it, and of course, you know, plays and stuff in high school, and then uh, and then I applied to go uh, to, to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and I auditioned for that, and that was kind of my ticket out to Los Angeles. Um what, what, let's go back to be, this because this is very relative to my particular show because we have listeners worldwide, like millions of people listen to the show and they are not in 
areas that have a lot of acting class options. For some mm -hmm. reason, Mara Marini, I have a huge following in Slovenia. Don't ask me. I talked oh, to a guy for two hours, and now I get emails constantly from uh, the wonderful fans in Slovenia who listen to the radio show. And one of their mm -hmm. uh, regular questions is, um, because they're in Slovenia, there aren't that many acting uh, options. So let's kind of fit this in. Growing up in Canada, you in Winnipeg, I don't know what it was like when you were little, but um, how many acting classes were there? Was uh, It's not as difficult to find them in Canada, I would imagine, as in Slovenia, but yeah. how, how did you as a child, uh, how did your parents kind of get you started in uh, acting classes, and what did they consist of as a child that you felt really uh, solidified your your thought of being an actor? What was happening? Yeah, I mean, at the time they enrolled me, in, it was called like Manitoba Theater for Young People, and it was um, a place where there was, uh, there was classes, there was improv, there was, you know, playwriting, um, you could write your own stuff and, and go up and do it. There was, you know, there was a lot of uh, involvement with oh. the local theaters, and we would do plays, and... You know, it just allowed you to, like, you know, break down scenes and, you know, what's going on here. And it wasn't, like, one particular influence, like a Stella Adler or a Stanislavski. It was, you know, all the teachers are kind of coming from their own um, their own school of teaching. So you're kind of getting bits and pieces of different things. They kind of just use what, you, what you're learning. But it was a great experience, and it definitely, you know... Um, brings you into that world and you get to like learn a lot of interesting stuff and uh, I'm a big who proponent knew? of like joining a class. <laughs> Mara, Mara, who knew all this action was happening in Winnipeg in Manitoba? <laughs> I don't know. For some reason I thought you were, you had to go to, oh, uh, that's like me, that's more Alaska. But I was picturing you going to like some place where there's an igloo like four clicks away. <laughs> I don't know what Winnipeg in Manitoba. So I was like, wow, well, it's pretty sophisticated there. So Yeah, we got to do something when it's free freezing cold so you stay inside <laughs> and learn lines <laughs> yay wow so i would assume that anyone who lives in canada in winnipeg and manitoba they do have a lot of acting options and where would yeah. they where we, would they um, find uh find these schools or classes i mean obviously the internet but you know are there any that we don't know about there's some golden goodies hiding in there you know, I haven't been back for a while because I have been, you know, in L.A., but uh, I know the Manitoba Theater for Young People is still going. Um, there's also, I think, Prairie Theater Exchange was a big one, and then also um, Manitoba Theater Center was our big theater. I mean, we have, like, per capita, Winnipeg Winnipeggers go to more uh -huh. theater than, like, anywhere else because we oh. think about it's so cold, there's not a lot to do, so we're yeah. big, big, big theater goers. So my parents would always have seasons tickets, would always attend, and... Um, so they also went to the theater center, had classes uh, that they would give as well that I also attended. So there's definitely options. You have to look yeah. for them. <laughs> oh, good. So, okay, people in Winnipeg and Manitoba, you got Laura Marini <laughs> saying there's no excuse. So enroll in some classes. Now, let's talk about, um, first of all, how did you get the, the acting job on Parks and Recreation? I do want to get that out there because that was yeah. one of the questions. So it actually, I mean, everyone's path is so different. You never know how you're going to get your next job, really. Obviously, auditions are a big thing. But um, for me, I was having a really hard time finding the right fit with an agent. And I think a lot of people have that problem because it's kind of like dating. You know, it doesn't mean like once you get one that it's going to be the right situation. Like it's, it really is a fit. How did and, you, um, I, you know what, I, Mara, that is such a great point you brought up. That is so important. Let's let, let's talk about that real quick. Give the audience some advice. That is so perfect. I'm glad you said that. How do you know when it's the right fit? Because a lot of actors think that the person who has the most uh, – the credits or highest clientele, high, highest, um, oh, what am I trying to say? The, 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 the most successful actors are the best fit for you. But it's just like picking a psychiatrist. It's got to actually mm -hmm. work with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us some tips. Yeah. How do you the know? problem is, though, there is no real formula to say, like, this person definitely fits for you. Because the problem is, is, 
you know, what works for me may not work for you. Like, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, you definitely want to try and look and see who their clients are and, you know, try to get a sense of them from the, you know, interview or two that you get with them, but, or meeting or whatever, but it's, it's just, so, it's so, so if challenging you're, that you kind of just have to take a risk. Like if you have a few meetings set up and you kind of have to make a choice, you just kind of weigh it out. And, and it, it definitely is not only, you know, do they have clients, but are they going to work hard for you? And unfortunately, it's hard to tell that. But one nice thing, you know, sag After does have a clause that if they don't book you work in 90 days, you can leave. So not to say you should jump from agent to agent, but it is a nice safety net for actors that are really – like there's just they're getting no traction at all, and you know they want to move somewhere else. If you can do that, so no, but I it's did not hard. That. that is a wonderful mm-hmm. piece of advice. So even though you sign a contract with them, there's an out clause. SAG will give you will kind of override that. Well, will they get in there and dispute it or? How, how, well, from what I understand, it's fairly it's fairly well known. I know um, a girlfriend of mine had to do that, and she just uh, she called SAG, and I think that she had to write a letter and photocopy and sign it, send it to SAG, and then send it to our agent, and that was kind of like the, the and the agent can dispute it, but if they can't really dispute anything if they haven't booked right. to work in the last 90 days, so right. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Oh, wow. Um, well, that's great to know. Understand. That's great. Yeah. Now, for example, if so, you're an actor and you're looking for an agent and you say, okay, I want to do comedy. So you go, you do your research and you say, okay, this is my list. I've compo- uh, comprised a list of all of the agents that currently have working sitcom actresses. Wouldn't that be the type of agent that you would go for first to, to try to... Yeah. Mm-hmm, right? Absolutely, but um, it's not always that easy to get meetings with those people either. I mean, you have to you have to either know someone or, or have some sort of referral. Sometimes because a lot of them get submissions that they don't even open, you know. So it's really it is a challenge. It definitely is something that like you know it's just when the stars align, you kind of get the right one. But you do there's a lot of trial and error. I mean, I have some horror stories of previous agents that were it was not the best situation, but right. you know. You right. do what you can, and what and, would you uh, rec- what would you recommend to the actor who is uh, at the level where they're ready to to get an agent? Because just mm-hmm, because you come mm-hmm. to Hollywood, people doesn't mean you automatically go searching yeah. for an agent. You know they do it, Mara Marina. <laughs> yeah, not, I, they've done three school plays. They come out here and they're like, "Where's <laughs> my agent?" So it's really tough, you know, because some of them, God bless yeah. you for the people who are out there doing this right now. You're a little delusional. It is a really <laughs> crazy town. So how in the heck do these people know? What advice would you give? Because you don't want, you yeah. could actually be like a really, um, a really gifted actor that is going to come out eventually. But when you first come out and you're green and you think you're ready for an agent, how how can we make these mm-hmm. people understand that you really have to build up credits and you have to have a yeah. certain amount of work under your belt before you go to try to, to seek this? Yeah. Account? Can you explain that? So I would recommend, I mean, and this is just my advice, everyone's path is so different, but you know, you want to be doing as much as you can. So if you're coming from something where you have zero credits, I would definitely go on to like actorsaccess.com or lacasting.com. Um, make sure you get headshots taken, upload those, and try to submit to some student films. Like start getting something on tape for yourself. Um, and definitely enrolling in classes and, and you know, getting to know people and like creating stuff for yourself. I mean, we have so much at our fingertips now that we didn't have, you know, even like back to like five, ten years ago, you can, you know, create your own web series, create some content online, like have something, you know, that you, you're working on that you can show an agent that, you know, I, I can do comedy, I can do drama, something, you know, um, and then there are, there are workshops, there are showcases that you can try to, you know, if you know absolutely no one that can, you know, possibly get you in front of an agent or, or, you know, get you some leads or something. But there is no formula, and you can't really say, like, oh, you know, I, I want to have this by this time because you just don't know how it's going to work. You may book some stuff on your own. With Parks and Rec, I booked on my own. Um, so it just kind of depends For on your, your situation. You knew. Through someone you knew, it was like you met someone and they said, hey, 
come out and audition for this part. That would fall under the category, which I really think is important. I don't know how you feel, Mara, but I think that it's very important for you to get out there and network. Mm -hmm. It's great to take mm -hmm. these classes, but you got to go to these little networking functions. Go everywhere people invite you because you just don't know who you're going to run into. Am I right, Mara? Yeah, yeah, and again, that being like everyone's path is just so different, but yeah, you want to, you know, get out as much as possible and, and make your options, you know, the pool of your options as large as possible as well, right. so for sure. Absolutely. Now, you do comedy and drama. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me ask you, which do you prefer? Comedy, for Yay! sure. <laughs> <laughs> because I know you're doing all of these, uh, I think I uh, we had said earlier that you... Um, that you will, well, actually kicking it. I'm not familiar with that, but I think that's a yeah, comedy, right? You're it gonna is. Be, you're going to be a guest. It airs tomorrow, actually. Yeah, wow. it airs tomorrow night on Disney XD. It's called Kicking It, and I play uh, a fun New Jersey housewife. But it's very cute. It's very um, fun. It was a lot of fun to work with those kids. At, you had me at New Jersey housewife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a reality show fanatic, so you already sold me. I am tuning in. So it's going to play uh, on New Jersey Halfway. Do you have like the mm -hmm. snooky hair? What's going on? Yeah, they made my hair bigger for sure. My name is Gilda, and they have me in some really fun outfits, and uh, it was uh -huh. definitely a great time. Oh, <laughs> my God. Now, is there a possibility to bring you back as a recurring, just like on or Maybe. Is that I don't know, but that would be really awesome. There's definitely possible, so we'll see. Well, we've got to all tune in, and we've got to send the network lots of emails about how great Mara Marini is on Kicking It. So it's tomorrow night. And uh, again, what time? Um, um, it's at eight thirty Pacific time on okay. Disney XD. Uh, what are you saying, XD or XT? Yeah, so there, it's Disney X. X is in Xerox. D oh. is in David. <laughs> you know, I've not heard honestly of Disney XD. Is that like a special? It's another division of Disney. It's another yeah. Disney Channel, and it's um. It, Obviously, Disney, but it's, uh, I think it's geared a little more to, like, boys. Disney is geared, geared a little more to girls, I think, Disney X, because Kicking It is about, like, a dojo and, like, these uh, boys that attend it. And there's a girl, too, um, but it's uh, it's a little more. Wow, well, a little see, more I kind of could it. tell. I definitely can see where they would want to put you on a channel to <laughs> focus on the boys, because their boys <laughs> are going to be loving you, little Mara Marini. <laughs> This hottie toddy gorgeous thing. Um, so, and then you're also, I hear you're going to be shooting a politically incorrect feature this fall. Tell us. Tell yes. Us. Um, it's with Ahmed Ahmed. He's a really funny comedian. And there's um, actually some other people that might be involved. I can't say anything just yet, but it should be really a really great cast. Uh, we did, unfortunately, though, get pushed back to January. So we're not going to be shooting that just yet. Um, but I am going up to Toronto at the end of the year to shoot a film as well called Limo, um, and that's exciting. Is so that there's definitely fun stuff coming up. Is that Leno as in Jay Leno? Oh, no, or? sorry, sorry. Limo as in limousine. Oh. It's a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's that Winnipeg, Manitoba accent. It gets me every time. <laughs> sorry. Limo. Okay, Limo. Oh, so um, is that an independent? I'm sorry, did you say it's an independent, right? Yeah, yeah, but um, but again, like I you unfortunately can't say, can't say a ton about it, but there, it does have some like good stuff happening. So you know, I'll keep you posted <laughs> on that, and yeah. uh, and then we um, I just recently uh, create uh, we finished writing a web series. Me and my writing partner Ricky Maybe, who grew up with Seth Rogen and that whole crew, they're also you know all Canadians, and um, it's really funny. It's kind of it's. I know, I, I know we spoke about inside dating on break.com and that was kind of more advice driven to guys about like what to do and what not to do online dating. And then this series is all about like my real date stuff that's actually happened that is so unreal. You won't <laughs> believe it, but my actual dates that I've experienced in Los Angeles and we're going to reenact them with some of the funny Canadian crew and some other 
uh, great actors in L.A. And we're hoping to get my friend Jim Paris, who was on True Blood, to be in it. And a lot of, like, really fun stuff coming up in the mix. So I'm excited. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's fantastic. What are you talking about? Where Now, where can we see this? What is What, what are we going to go? So we're hoping um, it's looking like, again, I don't know what I can say, but it's looking oh. like it's, we're, we're going to be doing it with uh, Yahoo Shine. Um, that's looking like the, the home it's going to live at. So um, that will all be finalized hopefully this week. And then we're going to start shooting really soon. So I'm really excited. Oh, my God. Well, I'm excited <laughs> for you as well. You Now, how can we, as everyone who's going to be listening and then check you out, is going to automatically become a big fan, how are we <laughs> going to follow how do we follow you and, and, and find out about these things? Do you announce? Yeah, I'm very sales? viral. Okay. <laughs> I'm very oh, viral. So I'm on Twitter. That's and that's, on a good, that's in a good way, people. Just in a good way. Hot. She's not viral in that way. Yeah, come on. All right. <laughs> So you're, you're so you have a lot of social media sites. One of them is uh, you're known as Pop Gloss on Twitter, right? Yes. Uh huh. And, and then also Pop Gloss on Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And let me ask, where did this name come from? I love this name. <laughs> So I joined Twitter January 2007. I joined it. I fell in love with it. And there weren't a lot of users on at that point. And we all, I made friends with a lot of people like around the world. And um, it was just such a fun thing. Like Twitter sent me shirts. I'm wearing my Twitter shirt shirts. I won a Twitty award, like really fun stuff. And, and all my friends were like, oh, Twitter, no one's going to sign up for that. No one cares what you're doing. And oh. then three years later, they're all on it. <laughs> but I love Twitter. And I wanted to find a fun name because I wasn't sure at the time that I wanted my full name on it. I didn't know where it would go. And, you know, like I didn't know. I just wasn't sure. And so for me, it was like pop, like poppy, pink, pop culture, like kind of looking encapsulated at and gloss. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with lip gloss. I have like an arsenal of lip gloss. So I was like, pop gloss, it sounds so fun. It sounds like me. I'm just going to use it. It just kind of stuck. <laughs> I love that. Now, I'm glad that you brought that up when you said, uh, I, I started <clears throat> started Twitter, and I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know, where, so I picked this name, Pop Gloss, which I love, and I'm obsessed over, and I actually think I'm going <laughs> to use that. But what, uh, what happens, uh, let's talk about how important it is with branding. And I always mm -hmm. bring this up, to keep things consistent for the new mm -hmm. actors coming up you want if you want to brand your name and you want people to know who you are and people to be able to find you try mm -hmm. to keep your twitter name your facebook name your linkedin name try to keep it all the same with your website name think 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 when you're first for the young people that are coming out you know get your website address if your name is john smith make it johnsmith.com your twitter john smith your facebook john smith because it's easier for casting people to find you they meet you at a mm -hmm. party say you don't have any resumes you don't have any cards which you should and you're not doing your due diligence if you don't check these things out first but you should always have it but in case say you don't for some ungodly unholy night you don't have any of this and they remember your name they can go on google and you know hopefully find you on a website but say you don't have a website yet because you can't afford it because you can only eat a can of tuna a week that's it <laughs> so you at least can have a twitter and a facebook name and make them consistent so they can find mm -hmm. you so let's just yeah. uh, let's make sure um okay so let's go on and talk about um so oh wait a minute before we go are you do you still have the dating show inside dating on break.com can we still see episodes of that yeah, so well, we're, we're in talks about, you know, creating more for that and, and going back and, and working on that. But um, MadeMan.com, which is a, a division of Break.com, um, we're just deciding where on Break.com we want it to live. So I do think there's going to be more Inside Dating episodes in the future. We're just, we're not sure if it's going to be on MadeMan or like Chickapedia, which is another um, Break.com website if we want to live there, or on you know, the homepage break.com. We're figuring all that stuff out, but uh, I do think we'll be back with some more advice stuff. But in the meantime, uh, I, I hope you guys can check out the God. web series. I'm going to tune in just to listen. I bet you had some crazy stuff. Crazy. Oh, activity yes. Going on oh, your day. I, yes. I would imagine with the way you look that some guys would just see you and like, 
10 seconds later, they'd be done and they have to go to the bathroom because you're so gorgeous. <laughs> and that would be the end of the day. They're like, we're all good for the night. Let me just call you next time for a f- quick fix, right? But um, I'm excited and I hope that you uh, put me on the list, your email list for any kind of new updates and stuff. Do you have a like a fan a fan uh, email list that you keep that we could get on if we go to your website? Oh, that's so sweet. Um, I I don't know. You know, my um, you know, my people kind of put my stuff together. I know there is like a contact um on my um on my website, like where you can contact, and I think you can email. But if not, um, I'm very active on Twitter. I'm like always on there. You can always at message me or. Um, very active there as well, so I'll definitely yeah, post anything on there. Yeah, they could follow you. You could follow her on Twitter. Is it follow on Twitter? Yeah, I think so. I can't. I get confused between the following and the linking and all that. So you can follow <laughs> her on Twitter, and uh, I don't know if uh, you automatically accept people on Facebook, but I think you have a page that people can at least like, correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely check that out and... I know, uh, Mara, did I hear correctly that you, something uh, slipped through the cracks when you were talking about True Blood? What was that you said about True Blood? Oh, um, one of my very dear friends, uh, Jim Perrick, he's not on this season, but he was been on since the beginning, and he played Hoyt on the show. I have, Um, I'm obsessed, Mara, with (laughs) I have not watched one episode of True Blood, and I recently met uh, I recently met a friend of mine. Her her uh, nephew is married to an actress that's on True Blood. Do you know her? Her name is Tara Buck. I don't know her. Well, no. She's been on there for years. I can't remember what role. We, we met at a party and we were briefly talking about it. But she's been on since the very beginning. And I think she plays like one of the, and again, I have not watched this, but I think she said she plays one of the women who they use to feed, like feed off oh, of. Oh, okay. I don't know what that means. Okay. I don't know, but I'm sure you know what that means. But um, Okay, so we don't know. But anyway, Tara Bach is on True Blood, too, so check it out before. I think they're at last year. I, I think next year is the last year. I'm not sure, but that's what I heard. But I yeah, waiting, I think so, yeah. I'm waiting for it to end, and I'm going to watch it all at once. So, <laughs> so um, let's talk about what do you feel, Mara, has been the biggest lesson that you've learned uh pursuing this acting entertainment career what what would you give as, as advice to someone else well I think when I first moved here um I I someone who's a very big actor uh he gave me a really great piece of advice and he said that you know because this is how he got his start is he's like you know if the content is not there for you just create content for yourself Mm-hmm. And I've always been a big proponent of that. So to me, that means like, you know, also just get in classes, get networking, get like, you know, with people that are like minded that you could write with or do something with or shoot something with. And or if you want to do it on your own, of course, as well. But, um, you know, I've created a lot of fun stuff, you know, writing stuff or write this web series, which probably into a TV pilot that my other writing partner and me wrote. And we just want to get it done. We just want to work and, you know, we just love doing it. So you can't just sit there and, and wait for someone to call you. You really have to have a hustle. And if you love it, like you should be creating stuff anyway. You should be, you know, in class or, or doing it if you really love it. Um, so I think that that was a really great piece of advice because I I'd never, I'd always thought, well, you know, I'll be doing other people's content and I'll, you know, I, I, I can't wait to act in something, but yeah, you, that happens too, but you can also, you don't have to wait. You can do your own stuff and, and, you know, it'll only snowball and maybe lead to other things and who knows what, you know, so. And I'm glad that you said that and, and what you mean by creating your content is, uh, what is very prevalent now in our business, which is people that are creating their own web series. I mean, YouTube is now, I think, pretty much unlimited as far as how, how, much time they give you but a lot of people are doing the whole web series thing uh, just like mm-hmm. this is internet radio I got started in internet radio when it was just becoming popular and people are like what up oh, what's internet radio now if you're following media you know that internet radio is and I can say this safely will be replacing terrestrial radio they're they're closing at leaps and bounds uh, they just can't afford it it's a big uh, money-sucking uh, 
business to have a terrestrial radio station. And if you notice, most of the ones that still exist uh, do have internet radio. So internet radio will eventually uh, replace terrestrial radio. Web series, when uh, one of my friends got started, she was one of the first people to create it shortly after um, the girl who created the guild. And web series are just a, just a phenomenon. If I'm sure everybody knows what they are, but for people that are actors and you think, oh, you know, I'd rather be in a film or on television, a web series, what, what, what? Well, let me tell you, uh, Felicia Day created a little thing called a web series and this woman is huge now i mean i can't even tell you how how the guild took off and she's just a huge actress right now so creating your own content is very important and like mara says if you if you can write i mean my god it's you can do it as little as like five minutes a, a segment so surely you can hopefully write something for five minutes and you don't know you could be gifted at writing your own stuff or have a friend to write it for you and it could take off so uh, web series are very, very a very good career tool, and you should think about doing it. So, um, what do you feel, Mara? There are so many challenges, and I know we can't cover them all. But what are do you feel are the biggest challenges of working as an actress in Hollywood today? Very different way back in classic Hollywood. What mm. do you feel overall for men and women are the challenges of working well, actor well, or actor? First of all, I think that the industry should be called a different thing for men than it should for women because I think it's a completely different industry, like hands down. I mean, I was um, able to see the breakdowns for a while, uh, and I, so I got to see what you know the agents got to see when they were submitting their clients. And I would say there are five roles male roles for every one female role. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention, you know, when they cast, like say they cast a 40-year-old woman for something, they're often casting a 30-year-old woman. So mm -hmm. there, there are, is that, you know, that youth, that sort of, you know, and, and people at, at home, like in the Midwest, are watching this and like, oh, that's what a 40-year-old woman is supposed to look like. Well, no, that, that woman's 30, like a 40-year-old yeah. woman. So there's that. There's also image stuff. I mean, how often do you see comedies where it's like, you know, kind of a overweight, you know, right. Melissa older man with a gorgeous w young wife. Right. Um, also, I mean, Melissa McCarthy is, is amazing. Um, but I mean, so, so often it's that kind a of a handicap. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not, I mean, they, they on Glee, uh, I, one of my favorite shows, but I mean, they chose an actor who is not handicapped, and I, I really applaud that they, they're, they brought the whole idea of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a guy in a wheelchair on the show and brought awareness to that, but they should have just gone ahead and hired mm -hmm. an actor who was disabled, so that's often yeah. an area that's not being written for as well. Right, that's true, true. Um, also, you know, there's there's a lot more women out here pursuing it than there are men, and there are more roles for men. So I do think it is a different industry for women than it is for men. Um, that being said, I think the biggest struggle, um, I mean, there's so many. I would say the one that's, that's been hardest for me, like through my early part of my career for a long time, was the agent thing, like finding that right fit. That was really hard. I had a lot of really challenging experiences with that, like really a lot, a lot of, from one thing I had to come back in my bikini, from another one, like telling me she'll take me on, but I had to cut my hair short, dye it brown, because I wasn't oh. pretty enough to do supermodel stuff, and oh. I didn't look quirky enough if I wanted to do funny stuff, and I did it, and oh. she didn't send me out on one audition, not even one, oh. and that just like was so hard for me, that was a really challenging time. Yeah, you felt, I mean, and, I, I um, would imagine you felt violated, because it, mm -hmm. is, it is very hard as an actor, because people have different opinions. I, yeah. you, if, you, if, if you talk to five people that are in the so-called power our positions, I, all five of them could have a different opinion of how mm -hmm. they see you. How do you know what you need to do when you're being told yeah. by, you know, what do you do, Mara? Yeah, I mean, and at that time I was so young and I just wanted an agent so bad and she was right. a good, it was a good agency. I won't, I won't call her out, but it was a good agency. And so I thought I had to do it. And for me, it just really cemented, like, you, you have to know, know who you are. And this is another thing that Remember I said that famous actor guy told me about create your own content. He also told me, know who you are. Like, he's a classically trained actor, but he's a big guy. He's a deep voice. He's like an action star. He's like, I know I'm going to go 
at least my big break is going to be in this genre and action. You know, Seth Green, he's funny and quirky and that's going to be comedy. Like at least know, know your niche at least to get your foot in the door and then you can expand from there. But definitely like, you know, know what you're selling sort of thing. And that was really helpful advice too, because, you know, I just felt a little like muddled after that whole, you know, dye your hair, cut it short sort of thing. And I cannot imagine, I mean, you are probably one of uh, God's greatest gifts as far as in the in the physical attributes department. So I can't imagine anyone telling you that you needed to change anything because you oh, are, you. seriously, you are what, if someone t- is to look at you, you are what personifies the, and I'm going to put quotes on this because hopefully it will change, but you are what personifies the movie star actress to look like. So I cannot even imagine that someone was giving you tips and advice on you know what you need to do to change your look so that just freaks me out right there because if they have the nerve to tell you that you need to change your look imagine what they tell people who come in that look a little you know different than you that they might really hurt them hurt their self-esteem break them down and cause them to just give up entirely because they think that it's you know it's for the um angelina jolie's or the Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know the 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 polished look so but there's a place for everyone i think um perfect example melissa mccarthy brilliant comedian um uh then you got steve buscemi so there's a Mm -hmm. look i mean these are not you know these aren't the Cary grants and the marilyn monroe's but these are people that are very powerful actors so character actors are very very important so don't think just because you don't look absolutely you know you can come out here and rock it you just have to study and have Mm -hmm. some talent now let's get to these i just want to get at least one question in um oh yeah uh we had uh Three people email, send us emails, and I'm so sorry, but we have two minutes. I'm going to try to get at least one question, and um, I will beg people, Mara Marini, to come on the show next year, and then we'll get the other two questions answered. But <laughs> let's go. Let's go with. Um, okay, let's go with Paula from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She says, "Hello, Mara. I want to move to LA, but I heard it was very, very expensive. How much should I save before I come out there? Is it easy to get a job?" help oh well hello Paula I am really bad with numbers so I don't know how to say exactly how much you should save but I I would say you know maybe go on Craigslist and and kind of just start looking at like what uh, what monthly rent would be or or what you you know what you could afford and and maybe try to have like a few months saved up or something before you came out here um you could definitely you know like a lot of people start off with, you know, like a side job just so they have supplemental income, like, you know, waitressing or bartending or, or you know, hostessing or whatever, um, you know, so it, it, you're just keeping an eye out for that. Like, also on Craigslist.com, there's also jobs and, um, you know, I, I know when I first started, just like I kind of worked a bit in the nightlife industry because, you know, I was able to make some money there and, you know, you, always side jobs. Like, I've had a lot of hilarious side jobs. I was once had to be Grimace. <laughs> that, big, huge purple thing. that was definitely a highlight of my life. Um, so, you know, you never know where your adventures will take you, but every day is an adventure out here. And if it's what you love, you just have to pursue it. You don't have a choice. You know, you just know it. Absolutely, and and I'll just add to that. And I I come from, <laughs> uh, I come from the mindset of please, people, please don't come out here with, uh, you know, twenty five dollars or fifty dollars because it is very very hard to just come out here and just you know get a job the same day and that you don't want to have to worry. Mm-hmm. And this is my mindset, yeah. which may be different from Mars, but uh, I ca- I could not even imagine coming out here not knowing where I was going to live if I was going to have mm-hmm. a job. You should have some money to last you. Again, this is my personal opinion. Ha- save up for at least a year's rent, a year's, and include utilities because you need to be living comfortably. Because if you have to worry about where am I going to sleep, where am I going to eat, am I going to have gas to get around, you it really will affect how you look for work as an actor. Because that's true. Yeah, it's too yeah. much stress. You can't have, mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. acting is a stressful uh, a job 
already on a scale one to ten i'd say it's probably a ten and to compile that with the problem of having to worry about where you're going to get your next meal you won't be able to afford acting classes you won't be able to get headshots you won't be able to Mm -hmm. even get around la so you really please don't come here with just a buck in your pocket save at least Mm -hmm. for a year uh of rent and utilities and uh that's what i would say and then you know, you can yeah, get a job. Right, okay. That's that's what I would do. I can, but I'm low risk. I'm low risk. I'm not. But you know, some people have done it. They come out. They come out here with two pennies and they made it. So again, like you said, Mara, there's different fates for different one. What works for you may not work for me. So you just have to you have to know what the worst situation is and then see if you can handle it. If you can come out here, live on a bench and get to an audition the next day, God bless you. I can't. <laughs> so, well, Mara, thank you so much, my darling. Thank you so thank much for coming on the show. Me. I really thank appreciate you. it. You have been awesome. You've given so much great advice and I cannot wait to like thank pump you. this out. I'm going to be blowing this up on every social media website to listen to this interview, which you will probably be able to listen to later Later on tonight after 8 o'clock. Um, but please, awesome. please, please, uh, please come back on my show next year. I'm booked till March, but I would love to have you come on in March. I'm going to talk you. to Steve and set you up for March. And then we can talk about the other things that you'll be doing. Because by then you will have yeah. done your horror film. You will have been yeah. finished your web series. So we're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about, <laughs> right? Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mara. Mara, I want you to say goodbye to your fans. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening and supporting. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and rest of your week. (laughs) Yeah, and check Mara Marini out on maramarini.com, social, uh, Twitter, Pop Gloss, Facebook, Mara Marini, and Instagram, Pop Gloss. Thank you, Mara Marina. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.